This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Welcome to the latest edition of Tiger's Talk with Chirko and Company. One episode away now, Doc, from episode number 40 of the podcast. How about that? I'm talking real big stuff now coming here, going down, going down for real for Tiger's Talk with Chirko and Company. And it is Doc, the podfather, alongside me. Doc, what's going on today? Bada boom! Realest guys in a room! How you doing? I'm doing great. Tigers are winning. Five and one since our last podcast recording, and we just chatted before we started. There is an obvious reason. Tell everybody why the Tigers are now in an upswing, in a position where it's totally different. The vibe is completely different than where we were one week ago. It's all about my relax, calm down, cool down, and all that jazz that I talked about last week on the podcast. And I told you as well to relax. And I don't know if you have, but they've been 5-1 since last Tuesday's recording. So since last Tuesday specifically, 5-1 since then are the Tigers and on a five-game winning streak going into Cleveland now. Now, Vito, it's not only that you told everybody to relax, but you added your own personal flair to the tweet on our Twitter page at Detroit Podcast. Tell everybody what that tweet was about. I just retweeted it, so for those that don't uh, check us out on Twitter regularly, tell everybody what you did, as well as telling everybody relax. I danced a little bit around. and I pedo dance, baby. I did the dance. dance. It was a good luck dance, like the rain dance, right, when you want rain to come. Well, I did that, and what happened? Well, the Tigers went on a five-game win streak now to date and have won five out of six since last Tuesday. So I think I'm the difference maker. I made it happen. So we're definitely going to keep it going this week after we're done recording, after we talk to our great guests from M Live. I think you have Aaron McMahon. Aaron McMahon, the, the McMahon. We're going to call it the McMahon Chronicles, joining us in today's edition of Tigers Talk with Churgo and Company. We're going to review the week that was for the Tigers. Lots of things to get into. A lot of players are kind of stepping up, turning the tide. We're going to actually kind of look at, you know, whether it's due to the fact that the competition wasn't that great or was it due to the fact that some hitters now have come around? But the Detroit Tigers are playing so much better, and it's much more enjoyable around town to talk about a winning baseball club. And, hey, across this network, we have to give Brad Osmus a lot of credit. Made some changes. Tell everybody, Vito, what did Brad Osmus really do in this last week to kind of juggle that lineup? Well, I would say what he did was he jump-started the lineup by flip-flopping J.D. Martinez and Justin Upton. I like that, and I like how he used the bullpen, too, in a game over the weekend where these guys pitched – They had all these guys, five relief pitchers, I believe, came in and pitched scoreless baseball. No hits allowed either for a good amount of the game, good portion of it. So impressive in how he handled the bullpen in that weekend, how he flip-flopped J.D. and Justin Upton. Upton, I mean, has he really hit that much better? A little bit. J.D., I think, is what he is. He's good no matter where he's hitting right now because he's that good of a ball player, that impact bat. He can hit number two, hit it in the middle of the order, and I really like him there. But really the difference maker or difference makers have been Nick Castellanos, Three-run home run, tied it up on Sunday, helped them win that ball game. He's leading the American League in batting average. And then Vimar is second right now, from my knowledge, in American League in batting average as well. Vimar, I would not have expected it. And Nick Castellanos, honestly, I would not have expected it either from Casty. I told you, I thought Casty maybe 15, 20 home runs. We did that over-under as part of Big Vito's over-under earlier in the season, or before the season started, Doc, you and I did. And you were more the guy on the upper echelon of that over-under, saying 20. And I think you're even confident enough, probably at this point, to say over 20 because of how well he started off. Hitting for extra base power, but hitting for average as well. So he's been clutch and really good all around at the plate so far this year. So proud about him, and I believe that'll be part of your toast of the town as we started that segment last week on Tigers Talk. Want to continue that on a almost weekly basis at least, and I think he deserves some cred from you, Doc. Listen, I think, you know, I was listening back to the Motor City Sports rant. I think that Doc has had now a spring revival. I'm a little bit more positive, a little bit more hopeful. Some of the passion's coming back, talking about the Detroit Lions. Now the Detroit Tigers are playing well. It's, it is actually way better to talk about a ball club that's actually winning, and it's nice to see them mash the baseball. Hell, if you're one of those people that poo-poos, you know, that they played a weaker schedule, fine, I get it. It wasn't the the likes of, you know, the White Sox or Kansas City. You were playing the likes of Minnesota, and you were supposed to actually beat them. The expectation is that you go into ball clubs that are in last place and dominate them. 
Minnesota sitting eight and eighteen at the time of this recording. So you go in there, you handle your business. Some, you know, the last game with Pelfrey, I believe each and every game that he starts is gonna be a challenge. But hell, you won the game. That's important. You showed a little bit of grit. You're down five two, but you come back. Wasn't That's that what's great key. to see? And Castellanos yeah. doing it too. It's nice to see them playing winning baseball. It's a much better vibe when you look at things from that perspective a little bit right now. And it's nice to talk because we obviously know what we think about Brad Osmus collectively. But hell, even even a manager that we think is ineffective overall can have a good week. And he had a good week. Didn't cost them any victories. Really relatively calm. And uh, his ball club can make him look like a great manager. We just need to see it much more consistently. I believe, you know, right now as we're sitting 14-10, and 10, three games back of the White Sox, this is a good ball club if they hit. That's and about the key. That. And that's really where Brett Ausmus, I don't think, really matters that much in what he's doing. Now, he can make mistakes, and he will, but I think it'll be more with the pitching staff than the hitters. I think the hitters can hit no matter what. It's about the talent being put out onto the baseball field, not really his managing style or techniques, you know? If they can hit, they will, and when they get hot, they go on long streaks of hitting the baseball and hitting the baseball a long distance out of the ballpark and for multiple runs per game, as he did towards the beginning of the year, went into a slump there after that portion, and then have bounced back since, winning five of six. And their lineup, yes, is good enough no matter, I think, what Brett Osmus does to the lineup. He will not mess it up miserably. He, he doesn't have that bad of a negative effect. Now, on the pitching staff, maybe here and there. But he did well enough. And really, at the end of the day, though, it's about the team performing. Even the pitching staff. The bullpen coming in, he put the right guys in, okay, over the weekend in spots where they should have been put in. But at the end of the day, it's about those guys getting outs, too. And they can't get outs. It's not totally on Brad Ausmus at the same time, even though we've criticized him and blamed him for this and that. So, a great weekend. I mean, it was good. Good for him because the team played well. When they're winning... There's no doubt about the manager. There's no criticizing the manager. But really, that's more about the team getting it done than him getting it done, in my opinion, at least, Doc. Oh, so That's my opinion about that. So you're saying it's not so much what Brad Ausmus did. It's just that you kind of seen collectively when the team hits a little better, when the starting pitchers can get guys out and the bullpen's effective, they can make any manager look good. I get it. But, hey, he was the catalyst in that he made a lineup change. He recognized that, okay— We've had this kind of prolonged streak where we were losing games, not scoring that many runs. The offense was in a funk, so he made that change. And you could say maybe that Justin Upton kind of benefited from it, and he was a guy that kind of now is back on track. But I'm interested to hear what your guest has to say about the week that was for the Detroit Tigers. Who's coming up next? Aaron McMahon from MLive.com to talk about the Pistons a little bit, Andre Drummond, his free-throw shooting woes from all this past season, and about the Tigers next here on Tigers Talk with Chirko and Company. And now joining me on episode number 39, one episode away from episode 40, is Aaron McMahon from MLive.com to talk a little bit about the Pistons, Andre Drummond, his free throw shooting woes, and the Tigers season that has been so far. Aaron, what's going on today? Not much, Rito. How are things going with you? Very good. And this, by the way, this segment with you now, when we do have you join us, will be called the McMahon Chronicles, because you are the McMahon, Aaron. Okay? And... uh <laughs> I like that you like it. It sounds like you do like it. I know we talked about it beforehand, too. So I'm, I'm proud of that, that I came up with something catchy that will catch on with you as well. Yeah, I'm honored to have my own, my own title. That's, that's cool. Yeah, you deserve it, Aaron. And how about the Pistons now? They deserve to make the playoffs. They were good enough to make it in. But now their max contract caliber player of sorts, Andre Drummond, I mean, that max contract, going to get it this summer. They're going to ink him to it. But does he really deserve that? Because... I want to talk about today his free throw shooting woes, which have been plenty. And he shot a career low 35.5%, as you know, from the stripe this past season. And his struggles have led him to come out and say that he'll consider, or at least according to Stan Van Gundy, the head coach of the Pistons, that he'll consider switching to an underhanded shot for the 2016-2017 campaign. Now, are you drinking the Kool-Aid right now, Aaron, and believing this to be true already? Or are you still at least a little bit pessimistic about the validity of it? Well, I, I think, in Van, in Steve Van Gundy said it, I think all options are on the table at this point, including underhanded shooting. But, but like Stan said, it's going it, you know, to have to be approved by, by uh, Andre. I mean, he's going to want to have to want to do it or have to want to at least consider it. Um, you know, so I, you, have, you, you have to think it's on the table. It's, it's an option. 
Um, obviously, I, and I'm sure most players would agree, it, it'd be, it would probably be embarrassing, at least at the get-go. You know, it's not one of the, the underhanded uh, shot isn't widely used, um, and it's often, as we all refer to on the playground, it's a granny shot. So uh, most guys probably aren't willing to try it. I don't know if Andre is willing to try it. It hasn't, been, it hasn't, he hasn't been asked about it. Um, he's obviously he's real. Um, he's the type of guy. He's real sensitive about free throw shooting. Anytime you bring it up, he's you know he doesn't like talking about it. And I, I would imagine most people wouldn't either if they're in his spot. Um, but but like Stan said, it's on the table along with you know. And they've tried so many other things. You know, and, and people people don't see how much work he really does put into it. And, and he does you know every time we. The media go into the Pistons practice facility after a practice. Um, he's always the last one out, out in there shooting free throws, working on a shot. Um, they've done different techniques with him uh, this whole this past season. Um, they brought in uh, shooting coach Dave Hopla at the beginning of the year to work with him. Um, he's since moved on, um, worked with other other assistant coaches with on his form and repetition. One of the things that Hopla really tried to institute with him is that is some type of base. Um, um, I guess repetition for him. So if you notice, if he goes when he goes to the free throw line this season, he didn't. No, he didn't do this in the past. He goes to the free throw line. He centers his foot up to to um, to the basket. But he takes three dribbles and then shoots. So Hopper really tried to, you know, I guess streamline his approach so things maybe come come a little bit more rep, rep, you know, rep, repetitive for him. Um, that obviously didn't help. Um, so now they they try to uh, a shooting a shooting sleeve. It's kind of a new technology they're trying. Um, and, and this wasn't explained real well, and they, they didn't use it for a whole lot. They used it for a couple of weeks and try and test it out. Um, but it would basically it would go off anytime his his shooting um, um, mechanics were off. So anytime his, his arm maybe went to the right or left, or his hand didn't go straight, it would it would sound off. So that was another technique they tried. Um, but but Van, like Van Gundy said, you know they're they're going to sit down here in the off season. They, I guess they've got a few options on the table. He hasn't really specified. He did acknowledge the uh, underhand shot is on the table, um, and they're going to have to see what works and what doesn't. I think at this point it's a mental thing with Andre. You know, it's it's, it's he does fairly well in practice. I think they say he shoots about sixty percent. But he's able to change like to the games. So it's something something to miss there in the in the head. Pistons talk on Tigers talk with the McMahon, Aaron McMahon from MLive.com. Aaron, is it smart or dumb to say that Drummond will benefit from such a change to his free throw shooting style? And specifically talking about him going to the underhanded free throw shooting form. You know, yeah, and there's no guarantee that's going to work. And I think a lot of people seem to, you know, people have, you know, have, have yelled for Rick Barry. You know, he's the, he's the doctor of the underhanded shot. And he's, I guess, Rick Barry's got a record of saying he could improve, you know, um, Andre's free throw shooting percentage. And, and that's a certain, that's a possibility. But the, the one thing I think most people are missing is there's no guarantee. You know, he would have to, he, but if, should he go the underhanded shot, he, 